Hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I waited for updated information this morning. That way, we know exactly what's going on because we still have these storms training all the way towards Detroit. We have, in fact, they're in the tornado watch now. All these pink areas are tornado watches on this big line of storms that's going all day long. It's still going all the way to Saturday, bringing a big flood threat. But after this cold front moves all the way to the east, we're going to get a front induced low over here in the Atlantic and so far there is a potential for a tropical storm and that only happened three times in history since we've been recording them in April. Now this morning we actually have right now 12 severe thunderstorm warnings and we do have the tornado watches. We have it over here for the Ohio Valley, northern Indiana, northwestern Ohio going into Michigan so we have that tornado watch. We also have it down here for northern Arkansas going towards southern Illinois and a little bit of southeastern Missouri. And that one actually has a threat for 70 miles per hour wind gusts in this storm. And you still have it for northwestern Arkansas, southeastern Oklahoma, northeastern Texas. And that one's actually about to start moving across. Plus, what is still happening for the rest of the day today? Because there's still a tornado threat. I still see a chance for a few tornadoes, but I think eventually it's going to turn into a damaging wind event and not a big tornado outbreak. And the storms have been going all night long. This one's from Illinois. They actually had some storm chasers that got stuck in all this bad threats, guys. And there was actually a few tornadoes that popped down. I think altogether we had nine so far all night long, all morning long, but they were pretty hectic and strong as well. Here's a shot of another one that happened in Iowa last night. Here's a shot of another one that happened in Iowa last night, courtesy goes to Brian Michael Eakins. Well, we had a lot of tornadoes in Illinois, in Iowa, but we also had the one in Missouri that really sparked up a lot of damage. You can see it's red. And the damage so far in Missouri has been a lot. They said a few buildings, a few homes have been destroyed from this tornado. And reports are just now coming in. There is a possibility that there was some injuries and some possible fatalities on the Missouri tornado, guys. So please pray for Missouri. And we had gorilla hail last night over in Davenport. We had four inch hail falling down in Davenport. And all together, the power's been holding together pretty good. You got Puerto Rico with 20,000 people without power. But now it's going from Illinois, which is at 15,000, starting to go into Indiana. That's now having 25,000 without power. And that's going to add up. These storms are going to train across Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan for today. The strongest. And Michigan's getting without power as well. 14,000 for Michigan and 9,000 for Texas. There's power outages elsewhere. It's just less than 10,000. That's all. So you can see from your tropos way up in the atmosphere that you still have this cold temperatures coming through from upper Midwest. Why are you getting these storms training all the way from Texas all the way towards Ohio? And that's going to last all the way until Saturday. You got more coming in for Friday and Saturday. But when it goes to Friday, it's going to mostly be a little further to the south, mostly for Texas. And now we have the 12Z with H triple R. So you can see where your dew points that they raise all the way up till noontime, all the way towards southeastern Missouri, eastern Arkansas, southern Illinois, across Indiana, western Ohio, into Michigan. And that is going on all the way until around four and five o'clock this afternoon. Then it's going to carry towards Ohio in our coastal northeast, towards a little bit of western Pennsylvania and western New York for the rest of the day. But then your lift goes down after 7 o'clock and it starts becoming a southern problem with severe weather still. And you can see with your lift at all the way until 2 and 3 p.m. It stays very strong, especially from Michigan, Ohio, southern Indiana, western Kentucky, western Tennessee. Then after that, it dissipates pretty quickly from 6 to 8 o'clock for Pennsylvania, so no really big severe weather threat there but it still stays in the south after that then it finally dissipates but you can see your significant tornado perimeters would let you know about the instability as well as the shear that it really starts weakening down as you go through this morning and your chances are mostly for southern illinois going into southern indiana all the way until noontime then it sticks around michigan for a little while after that once it leaves Michigan, you can see that your perimeters really drop dramatically as you go through the afternoon, but you still keep them for northern Louisiana and Mississippi 
as you go into later tonight. Still a chance for something to form up. We have these storms going all morning long, especially from Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, going into Arkansas, also going into Kentucky and Tennessee as you go into this afternoon. And that's when it's pushing towards Ohio as well. And once you go into 5 p.m., you can see it starts becoming a damaging wind event with this system as it loses instability, it loses its chance to have strong tornadoes. You still got storms going all the way to the east. Now, you don't have tornadoes for tomorrow. I will show you. I know you had severe weather. I will show you the update. But these cells are going all afternoon long just training from western Tennessee, western Kentucky, across southern Indiana, northern Ohio, and across eastern Michigan all the way until 5 and 6 o'clock this afternoon. Then it's going to stay in Ohio for your threat all the way to about 7 o'clock. But then you start losing your instability by 8 o'clock. The thunderstorms really weakened down, but you don't see a lot of cells in front of this front. So if anything that pops up as a potential tornado, it will be a sleeper cell. It will be hidden within this line of storms. It will be rain wrapped. You won't see it. But you can also see that as that pushes by later, as you start for overnight tonight into tomorrow, these storms are training from Texas to Tennessee, Kentucky, northern Mississippi, southern Arkansas, Louisiana, all the way until Thursday. This actually poses a threat all the way until Saturday with all the training of these storms going in the same direction for hours. But you can see with your helicity values that you had a strong chance for a tornado in Missouri, a strong chance in Illinois, and you also get a strong chance going by to 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock this afternoon for southern Indiana, northern Ohio for a strong cell to pop up potential tornado but i do think it will eventually turn into a damaging wind event but once you go into later this afternoon you also have chances for northern mississippi to pop up a chance for a tornado as well you will still have your lift y'all the last ones to lose your lift then as you go overnight some more strong cells pop up for northern louisiana and northern mississippi again potentially around jackson so just be aware of that but after that, these storms are weakening off. There is no tornado threat for tomorrow. But you can see with the HRRR on the 12Z, by the time you go to 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, you're going to be getting 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts for Indiana, northern Ohio, southeastern Michigan. And then it goes towards southeastern Missouri, northeastern Arkansas, into Tennessee and Kentucky as you go later in the afternoon. And you get another round going through Ohio. And that's where you got that damage and wind event all the way to later tonight for western Pennsylvania, western New York. And that is about it. All night long, no more damaging wind event. Now you can see the update for today, and we do have the chances for tornadoes. It has considerably downgraded. We have the 2% in the green, the 5% in the brown. Here's your cities and states at risk for today for tornadoes. Plus we have the damage and wind. You can see how the damage and wind has souped up. That is going to be your biggest threat with a chance for a few tornadoes. Big 15% in the yellow, as well as this big 30% in the red for high winds today. And hail. You have a big 15% in the yellow, chances for hail to fall as well. And you can see here from National Weather Service, severe thunderstorm winds, large hail, and a few tornadoes are expected today from the Great Lakes to parts of East Texas and Louisiana. Also for tomorrow, you do have that severe weather threat, but you don't have the tornado threat for tomorrow. It will be chances for winds and chances for hail as well. And you can see this from National Weather Service, strong thunderstorms posing at least some risk for severe weather are possible across parts of the Mid-Atlantic and deep South Texas on Thursday. But you can see here with National Weather Service, as you go through Thursday, you get a big heavy bit of rainfall coming. This is causing flash flooding. You got to remember Places like Houston, big cities, full of cement. This water will not drain into the ground. This will turn into flooding. And after you go Thursday all the way until Friday and Saturday, all we can see is 7 a.m. on Saturday on this weather model. You can see how it just really adds up. And now it's showing widespread three to four inches for Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, southern Arkansas, northern Alabama, going into Tennessee and Kentucky. With a big heavy area going anywhere from northern Houston, all the way to northern Louisiana. And all that brown is chances for six inches or more. The max being six and a half inches of rainfall just in the next three days. And when you take a look with the Ural just for the next three days, it's bringing so far potentially four inches to San Antonio, northern Houston, 
over five inches of rainfall coming to y'all as it goes towards northern Louisiana. A lot of other people are getting anywhere from five to six, maybe even seven inches of rainfall coming only in the next three days. This is going to add up later on as all this keeps pushing to the east as we get that potential tropical storm off the coast and it brings more flooding towards the mid-atlantic i will keep you updated on that but so far for today they do have a big marginal for flash flooding but they also have the slight risk going all the way from southern texas going all the way up towards kentucky for tomorrow is going to stretch and come down towards texas with the biggest slight risk for flash flooding and then as you go through Friday, it stretches again from Houston going all the way into Mississippi, even Alabama. So Houston, you're in it for a few days of flash flooding. Please be aware of that. But you can see with the Ural that after all that trains, once you go from Saturday all the way until Monday and Tuesday, all the way till Wednesday, possibly Thursday, this surface load just sitting there spinning creating a lot of flooding and some high winds. So far, there could be some flooding towards the southeast, but I do believe that that will push a little further offshore, guys. But so far, it is adding up to a good bit of rainfall coming in that could bring a lot of flooding. I will keep you updated. Now, so far, National Hurricane Center don't have anything out for this graph. I will keep you updated if they do pose any information. But you can see here from the ensembles that we do have a chance for a surface load to form over here. And it could either go over Florida, so, so far something weak. It could go back into the southeast. It can go up the coast or it can get pushed out by the cold front and keep going towards Bermuda. So we have all possibilities still. And so far as of April 3rd, our ocean temperatures are pretty warm. All this right here in the green, this is all in the low 70s. You got to have at least 70 to sustain a tropical system. Now, all this orange up here is getting into the high 70s, almost 80. Plus, when we look at our velocity potential anomaly, we do see that we have some favorable environment right over that area. Anytime from April 14th all the way towards the end of April. So it definitely will have some favorable environment where this storm could actually form. Now we actually only had three storms form in April, tropical systems in all of history that we've been recording so far. So we had a subtropical storm that formed in 1992. We had tropical storm Anna in 2003, and we had Arlene in 2017. When you look at the 12Z run from GFS, it showed a strong tropical storm forming up by Tuesday on the 12th and staying around the northern Bahamas, maybe going across Florida something weak, getting demolished while it goes into the Gulf. And so far, brought it down to 996 by Tuesday afternoon. And so far, not really good formation, but it does finally get some kind of formation and brings at least heavy rainfall towards the southeast as it goes across Florida all the way from Tuesday to Thursday and this loses all kind of formation period, but brings more rainfall towards the south central after that. Just a big cluster of disorganized thunderstorms. Now the latest update on the GFS shows that it does still form a little bit further out, it shows it still stays pretty weak, and it don't really do much. The sits there, spins, dies off, and moves away. The Euro is showing something different, but still winding up getting a lot of precipitation with it, so that could affect northern Bahamas, maybe even Bermuda, before the cold front smashes it away. So it's pretty unreal that we actually get something forming in April. When you look with the update on the Canadian, trying to see what is trending, it does bring a surface low by Monday, very weak, and maybe get two vortices going on. That's what the Euro sees as well. But it favors the one along the coast and just rods up the coast, very weak, and then pulls away all the way by next Thursday. Just sits there for a while. Now the Euro shows this as well as it brings precipitation down with it. It pulls precipitation up from the Caribbean and this gets all together as one. Still forms a surface low by Monday and Tuesday, but then it starts separating. It starts seeing these double vortices just like the Canadian is seeing. So which one it favors? You still need a little more time to be sure. The Euro is going with the one on the west side over the Bahamas towards Florida and weakens down greatly after that. Matter of fact, when you check the update with the Euro right now, because this is windy and this updates as updates come out, it shows it has a chance for two. It has one to push out into the Atlantic, but it still could form something 
and go across Florida and maybe get into our Gulf and just hover around the southeast for a while. That's the latest on the Euro. So when we go to the ensembles and see what the possibilities are, you can see in five days that you start getting some surface low pressure. Now, no matter what all these say, could they all say some pretty big and scary things? You want to go by this first one. This is your control member. This is your more than likely outcome. So by the time you go to Monday, you could have some kind of upper level low forming and it could strengthen up by the time it goes to Wednesday, still getting the double vortices, a double Potential surface lows just like the Euro seeing by the time you go to Wednesday, but it does eventually weaken off and just disappear. Matter of fact, that's what the ensemble show for the Euro. In five days, something could form up. It does go out into the Atlantic, but we still get that second surface low that forms up around Thursday and Friday and tightens up towards the southeast. But so far, all the high winds, it could be some heavy precipitation, some flooding coming. But so far, all the high winds stays offshore. No threat to the Bahamas, no threat to Bermuda so far. This is by the Euro. Now, remember, we are giving away another one of these solar weather stations for today. It's every other day, all year long. Updates every 17 seconds, connects the weather on the ground. All you got to do to get one of these is be a subscriber, put the comment weatherman in the comments below and hit the like button. I will call the winner out for tomorrow. Very easy to install. You can put it on a pole or you can just put it on your fence, guys. This is so easy to install. So I do hope this helped you prepare a little bit better for what's going on today with the severe weather, plus what could be forming off the coast in April. That's pretty absurd. This could be the fourth one in history recorded in April. So let's see what happens out of that. Thank you again for your time. God bless all of you. I hope you have a very blessed Wednesday. Today, I want to talk to you with Psalm 4, 1 through 5. Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and and seek after leasing. Selah. Selah means think about what you just heard. I'll say that again. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? Selah. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Selah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Have a very, very great day, everybody. God bless all you that was in these storms, especially you, Missouri. It looks like y'all got hit the hardest. So it's not over yet, but so far it looks like it could start going on its winding down stage. So that's a good thing, but damaging winds could be just as bad. So please prepare for those. Make sure there's nothing loose in your yard. could hurt your neighbors. It could fly around and do some very bad things. Remember, above all things, all glory goes to God. Our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he keeps you protected every day of your life, you and your families, forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Happy Wednesday, everybody.